Youth contesting the constitutionality of our latest election expressed their dissatisfaction with the political status quo and took to the streets in what is to be a series of protests. I spoke to affirmative repositioning activist Ndimbulukeni Nuyoma about the march held last weekend. Well, uh, on the 7th of March, we launched a uh, march uh, in protest against the corrupt system, uh, in protest against uh, what we believe in terms that uh, the judiciary system has been compromised uh, in terms of using its uh, powers and discretion, which are provided for by the Constitution, that an, an appeal that is launched to say that can you review your own decision, which is allowed for and provided for by the law. So the match in, uh, incorporates a whole lot of issues, uh, but most importantly pertaining to the elections and saying that, look, if the machines that were used are unconstitutional, then I think it's only fair that we all host elections in a constitutional manner, irrespective whether it's the presidential elections or the National Assembly elections. So we are merely concerned about the elections itself and the conduct in which that we have done those elections. And that is the purpose and the heart of this match to say, look, uh, until the 20th, of course, uh, the president that was elected by an unconstitutional process uh, and re-elected again under the same unconstitutional process uh, until the 20th at least he can still sit but after the 20th it is right and uh, that we have a discussion around what must happen uh, as to whether uh, that is how things must be and us as the electorates and voters are going to accept what is done so uh, many of us uh, voters that have voted through this process believe that uh, the process in which that elections were conducted was not free, credible and fair and we call for a re-election for us to have a, an engagement on how and the processes in which we must engage uh, going forward. Of course we are very excited and we are happy with the numbers and the turnouts that are happening across the country. Uh, it's not just in Vinduk, we are now visible in seven regions. Um, it's going to eight now, uh, around about nine in our calculations of yesterday. So uh, this protest also is, is, is going in different uh, spheres. It's not necessarily just that of people seeing, chanting on the, on the street. You, you are beginning to see that this, there will be an online petition for those that voted for change. There will be uh, petitions that will be signed by people exactly who voted in those constituencies with their voters register uh, numbers. So it can be compared and matched against the ECN system. There are people coordinating the matches in the regions. And of course, uh, when there is a need for a new petition, of course, we are just waiting for the judiciary system because we can't go to court protesting. They need to give us a uh, special time into when we can uh, come there, apart from weekends, and that's on weekdays. Uh, we are excited, we are hopeful maybe by Saturday they will give us a response uh, as to what particular date exactly we, are, we, we can go and hand in our petition at the Supreme Court. Swapo, the ruling party, also organized a demonstration and mobilized all their members to march in support of President Hage Gengob. Thankfully, no blood was shed during this demonstration. Affirmative repositioning activist Ndimbulikeni Noyoma shares his views on this. Uh, of course, we predicted it and we welcome it with open arms. Let all of us be in the street and show the whole world that Namibia is a <laughs> governless country. Uh, of course, uh, they must protest. Uh, for what they voted for and us we are protesting for what we have voted for I mean it's, it's, it's within our equal rights and, uh, and it's a good thing to, 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 to at least see that they are willing to go on the street for that I mean I read a statement by one of the chairperson assigned to by the youth league the youth league to Oshana and he makes a very good statement by re saying that at least those that are in power in Oshakati, their members must, their councillors must go. So you can see that we are stirring up different debates across the country. You are beginning to see that people who are passive are now active. You are beginning to see that uh, people who, who are just lay, lay, uh, laymen, uh, people are now able to articulate the law and articulate the constitution. So, which is a good process. So out of this whole protest, you are building, teaching, learning and unlearning, which is a good thing. The founder of the Power Party, which is yet to be registered, youth activist and forex trader Michael Amushelelo, came under fire once more for referring to the president as a dog during the demonstrations, eliciting condemnation from the highest echelons of the Swapo Party.
Namibians have shared various sentiments on these utterances and the general disrespect of our elders. Here are affirmative repositioning activist Ndimbulukeni Nyoma's sentiments on this. We have been called uh, unruly. We have been called uh, disrespectful young people uh, in the context of uh, politicians. Now, I think this, there must be a general uh, acceptance of who is an elder in the country. Does political power make you an elder? above than an old person who's 80 years old, who's not involved in the political sphere. So where do we draw the line on who's an elder and who's not an elder? We come from homes. Our homes, some of our homes are stable and not broken. We come from our parents, uh, our parents' homes who are very proud of what we are doing. Unlike others who are not proud of their children. In fact, some have banned their own children from entering their own homesteads. Those that are elders in the political sphere. So are those the examples that we are supposed to take from? If I come from a house where my mother knows that there is one drug addict and one criminal, he does, she does not disown her children. But what happens to them? We don't want to mention their names, but they know themselves. So the sphere of disrespectfulness or respect and other things, I, I think they must begin with their children. Which elder are we talking about? And people must get the context correctly. And we must, have, uh, and we must iron out issues for what they are and not protect uh, political crooks. Uh, because of those things. I mean, people are living in, in uh, they are languishing in poverty. There is, you go to Havana, there's no clean water. Sanitation is a crisis in the country. And we are busy issuing statements uh, in the name of respect. But we don't, we don't issue statements when people are dying of hunger. Because how do you issue a statement against yourself? So we must not hide behind respect to address social issues that need to be addressed in the country. Up next, it's Dudley's Doodles. About this week's cartoon, Dudley had this to say. I think the cartoon speaks for itself. The man is a pathetic loser desperate for attention, a pitiful little fop doodle. Fop doodle is a person of little significance. Veteran visual artist Ndashunye Shikongeni also expressed his concern with the current political situation in Namibia and shared his views. You see, the current stages that we have in Namibia is caused because we inherited an alien culture in Africa. Politics is not your culture. So it's somebody's cultures that we inherited. So if something is not yours, you'll always have a chaos in your continent or in your country. If the elders cannot realize the importance of a grandchild that is not born, the same if the youth does not realize an elder, that is why I'm saying, we have inherited the culture of a foreign culture. Because in politics, there is no discipline and respect. 
So it's where now you can see what is the chaos now in Namibia is because the respect that has been taken away from us, discipline, in the beginning of the term, when I say term, independence, our cultural heritage was taken away from us. So we are now fighting within the alien culture, and that culture is capitalism. And that culture is paper. Meaning paper is that anybody wants to be studying to get papers and papers. But in Africa, we are not led by papers. We are not led by capitalism. We are led by cultural people, traditional leaders, traditional people. And is it a farm or is it a village or is it a town? We are a family. So this to me is like we are now in a stage of emotional leadership. When you have emotions and you lead with emotions, you can say anything wrong against your own people. And it is wrong for us. As we are one Namibia, one nation, it does not exist. As we say we are the 90% of Christianity, we have no God. So there is a misunderstanding when it comes to what we are using today. I don't think if it's the English language that we inherited that we cannot understand when we talk about words and how we approach our elders or elders approaching their own, their own children. What I'm trying to say is that we are a very small country and if we have a question mark, what are we fighting for? We fight for the war. I was a youth through Nanso, shoot with bullets, fighting for what? Namibia to be free. That was taken by what? By the capitalists. Now I get independence and I realize that my independence that I got is a flag and an ID. Not my culture, not my land, not my resources. Where I was having a hope as a youth that time, I fought for that. And for me, I thought now when independence comes, that's why I call it even independence or freedom is wicked. Because I thought now everything is going to be free as I was mentally or I was being given to my people, to my people, that I'm going to have a free education, free hospital. You see, that was our motto when I was a young boy. Even I don't think I was a young boy, as a teenage boy, because I was 14 years old, 15 years old, when I was in Angola. And I didn't go to school, I went to carry a gun. And our motto was to fight for my mother, land, to fight for the land against the capitalist the alien culture that we have taken. You are using a culture from outside, but that people are not like that. And we sit down all as Namibian people and ask ourselves, what is our problem? Who's fighting who here? If you say you are one Namibian, you fight for this country for Namibia. Who's eating from their own people? Who's, who don't want the neighbor, like we used to say in our culture, a your finger. The neighbor is the, bo the backbone of their neck. How does that disappear from our people? And that's why I've realized that also. The Ministry of Arts and Culture, and they used to change it, sports, education. What do they focus a lot? They focus on the West, or Western ideologies, education and sports. They don't focus on culture and arts, because that is us. So it's already what makes these young people to stand up also, is because we as the old people, we also made a mistake. If we could agree and accept about our mistakes, then we don't have emotional leadership. The president's surprise visit to the Katutura State Hospital following the horrific images that were shared on social media elicited some criticism following this clip. And I'm looking at the floor over. You didn't ask why I came. I came in one place. How come you didn't ask when I came in? How does it look? My concern is that the state no, no, of the no, hospital no. is in a very poor One state. One is that. How about other places? But apart? this wall is almost falling apart. Yes. It's one place. How about the whole wall? And they are going to fix it. But it's the fall. It's our own hospital. I have heard horrific stories of how patients in wheelchairs develop gangrene as a result of rats gnawing at their toes at night due to the unhygienic conditions in that hospital. Here's a clip of patients fighting off cats in the wards of the Katutura State Hospital. The It's a Rap crew was recently accosted by Nampal officers at the Katutura State Hospital. 
a public space whilst engaging patients about the conditions of the hospital. They were taken up to an office and forced to remove the footage that they had shot outside the hospital. So much for press freedom. I will keep you abreast of developments in this regard. We commemorated Women's Day under the theme, I am Generation Equality, Realizing Women's Rights. I spoke to a fruit vendor, Esther Andreas, who shared her experiences as a woman in modern day Namibia. I that's why it's very fun to have a feel long. Mala, na tangu na ine shiku fago kucha. Ano ba kani feel long? Very malu hepo. Ovo ditege kucha. Ovo vama nguluka. Eshi onungenge mutu oeli komesho eni malu wava kanande kuli. Ovo ditege kucha o kuli hepo. Se mutu taku purwash. O tuli ngasi. Ova anami biwa ninga wa hepa hepelela. Ina ninga kucha vetu. Three days. Ngao Gash na mo we land embolo to dili natu every day. Embolo to dili natu nu no na veli vat vane afutu texa o eating gao. Gengo o da koseti nyako eating no shivere wa shake shifiku o long ifi ingapi mefiku. To e da ko yangu texa me mweni andi long ifi ingapi mefiku. Amon duete shuangenge pangelo tariku fonga tungeno koko cha 
Genge only ya longo nge nonga shaya mendi longo ndondi na umboli ya dinga inga Mumbo mo shiki taluwe ya mende talu kufamo kana kama ga longe mepangelo Ndeko salali ya kota kujo 500 ya kufutila wa kwa wabaveli moskola oskola Nga ondi wete osha kwa fela shi durifeshi wataliko ni wafa watalo mbwa Nga wata feke ta kupuruashi uno nanga shiki wa batala nga wabeli moskrita o hacho wa kupuruashi Mala winala ne kulonga shi atu longo ne mala natangwa atu eka atu tata wa oturu wa mala kama inga hao longo yeke ngono Mala ngengo tula ngeto ti Hano shikulu ka jove Malo uduli keko kana ndeka dala Shikulu ka jove Oho Oho lombo la ngeta Ndeku lomba kutashuna konima Konima iji kona shike Ngeo konima tuli kona loma yove O shiki tuwe ya ndeto ti oh Meme estera Oho kala hapa ok Oka nileko ya ka Otaka ningi number one o number two Number three Number four Ponelewe na pukalepa ela Shata nge paka ka Oto yufu Te shashi ostolai Ya sa idafurika Nde sa idafurika Koko ko sa idafurika Ah sa idafurika Ala ndifo Osu ukai Ila ndifo mostola Tala ndifo po shivelo Nga shapa Opo ke pene kastoma detu Onu umota duku ya po kucha O meste lo kwe po chacho Nu umota duku cha kini Mari wane na noele Pengo matame javali Ande andafute mwenge linya Tatu loke kuwe ya nande kandipo O meste lini ya nena tampulo Oto ndi ya hei Kwe ndi kufako Esi toke yoga ndaka cha Yo pali me monika Kwe tapo pendio hei Vachoko ya kufako mata Pepe ngengo nda japa, memo nika kashinge nge fika makui, opu wanga wanda kani fika stom. Halo mami, tendola mami. A heartbreaking incident occurred in the city center last week. A disabled man who has been selling items in the streets for years was abused by a man said to be of Indian origin and had the local vendors and passers-by up in arms. Here's what transpired according to activist Monica Nambelela. Uh, on Friday, I wanted to go to ShopRite to buy, uh, to buy a cool drink. And then I found a commotion here and most of the women were up in arms because a disabled, severely disabled man was beaten up by a shop owner and, apparent, uh, and the reason he was beaten up is, is because He's selling popcorn next to his shop. And that man cannot even talk. He's speech impaired. He cannot even stand up for himself. And he was also thrown with cold water. So I found the Indian guy and the, and, and the men. They were taken to the police station for questioning. And people were, uh, people were threatening that the shop is not opening, but we found the workers throwing an attitude. And then I said, wherever we are, it has got nothing to do with xenophobia. It's about humanity. You do not attack. You do not attack a man who is disabled. The, uh, I know the disabled men. And I know that he will not even be able, he's, you know, speech impaired. He's not able to insult anyone and he walks very, very slow. I said, this is where so my social justice fight begins. I threw the stone at the window because the attitude of the workers, I was furious. It is unacceptable. It is unacceptable. We have seen Namibians. We have seen Namibians who are made to, to carry shit by the Chinese. It is when you come into a country, you integrate into the society. You cannot come. We are hosting you. And you are abusing our people. And that behavior, nobody challenged it. And today in solidarity, I want people to boycott Cosmetica, a boycott. I was in jail for three hours, taken like a common criminal. Our people are poor, no legal advice, nobody to protect them. In, a, in cases like this, we need pro bono, you know these lawyers that are working for free, because if there is something like this injustice, you pay someone $700, it's because of poverty for the poor. Even if you are wronged, even if you know, he's a severely disabled man, if you know, nobody knows if how he fell or what, 
his health condition, $700. You know, actually for such a person, home affairs which is here, I am demanding that the man, his, his shop must close down. Home yes. affairs, please help us to escort Mr. Uh, Mr. Zain. Home affairs, close the shop. How do you attack a severely, eh? a severely speech impaired man in his condition? Naftali Niolwa, a former plan fighter, also witnessed the incident. The guy came, you see I'm there. The guy came and beat the guy and gave him one shoes and everything and he poured the water. The water even came up to us there. So, he said the reason is that he broke his shop. But uh, truly speaking, he's in the party of shop right. And uh, as you see, he cannot broke anything there. People who passing, they saw clearly his fingers. Then he beat him because of his poorness, and he want the man to move. Where he going to move? Where? This is Namibia. And he's just a recent come in front of these guys here. This guy is here. He's here for more than even 10 years, sitting here. He don't want to steal, and he's not a drunkard man. He's not insulting anyone, he's a quiet young boy. He's a quiet young boy. And the reality is too painful to us. Because our government, it doesn't want to support us. That's why we are here, thrown away by the politician people. We are on the dustbin. And he don't want to eat on the dustbin. Like these guys, some they, they pick things on the dustbin. It's very shameful to say you are independent while you people are eating on the dustbin. What kind of independent of Namibia? And the people are stealing our wealth, they're stealing our, our, our soil, they're selling our land to the foreign people. It is not a Namibia again, it's a country of foreign. The China are there threatening our people, misusing our people, and we are here suffering for hunger. And for instance, I'm a freedom fight. I went 1974, I come 1980, 89, where I am here, to let my kids to survive, to put a bread on the table. Not that I want to be there. I'm there because they forget us, they threw us away. Now there's no way. That's why you now the foreign are chasing us, psychology, are misusing us because they enjoy it together with the people of government. It's the government who allow him to be here. Although he paid tax, or, or he paid the, 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 the place where he is, it is not fair to beat such a person. Another fruit and vegetable vendor known as Ndeshi was also saddened by the incident. I'm very upset because we know Kuri for a long time. He's innocent. He only come here to look for bread for himself. And then it makes me feel bad to see a gender man, tall and giant, to leave his shop and come and beat a poor person like that and pour him water. At the end of the day, he brings 700 for him to go and withdraw the case, which is unfair. And it makes me feel very... <laughs> Very bad. How can they beat him? It's not good. It's not good. We want him and his business must be closed. The disabled man confirmed that he was given 700 Namibian dollars by the offender. The shop owner, known as Sam, expressed regret about the incident and explained that neither he nor his staff had anything to do with it. This is Sam. I am aware of the incident outside the Cosmetica store in Central Windhoek last Friday. I want to state that this had nothing to do with Cosmetica or any staff member. This unfortunate matter was between a gentleman operating a cell phone counter inside our store and some vendors outside. I also would like to thank the Namibian police for their prompt assistance in helping to restore calm and resolving the matter. The person concerned has apologized to the aggrieved vendor. I condemn any such incident and find it most regrettable. I thank 
our customers for their support over many, many years. And thank you for the opportunity.